the story of Moses is so relevant to us. When Joseph first went down to Egypt, he was Mr. Popular because he could interpret the Pharaoh's dreams and save the nation from famine. Hey, he was promoted, his family welcomed. They were given a great place to live. God was thanked because these people had arrived. Now times have changed. Now this Pharaoh was hostile. Now he had said, let all the male children be slaughtered. Moses was supernaturally preserved. I just want to spend one more session here seeing that his parents inspired him. Why do I say that? Well, it says he was trained in all the wisdom of Egypt. He went away. He went, if you like, to Egypt University. He went into another value system altogether. He was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. So he's loved, he's named by her, cherished into that home, trained in a completely different wisdom. You know, the, the wisdom of Israel, let's just forget that. Forget that there's another wisdom here. And boy, did they have something to demonstrate in terms of their wealth and strength as a nation. Hey, forget that stupid stuff. Understand our wisdom. And he was trained in that wisdom. This is a massive thing. And beloved, it's not so very different to what we experience today. Maybe you teach your child from the Bible and then you send them to school. And where, when they get to school, they're going to be taught you know, the world just happened. Of course, of course, there's no creator. <laughs> of course, you know, we just kind of evolved. God didn't make you. You don't answer to God. You know, forget that nonsense. That is what they will learn at school today. Gender specifics, no, forget them. They will be taught that by sometimes teachers who are very inspiring, who as children, they might be giving them their respect. They'll be taught in all the wisdom of another culture altogether. They will be rubbing shoulders with kids who have no reason to even think about the values that you hold dear. If your teenage girl is still a virgin, she'll be mocked at school. Boys will be shown pornography by their friend on his uh, phone. That's the, that's the world they go into. And dear friends, it's not enough for us to say you mustn't, you're not to. We have to excite them with a vision that is greater. We need to enthuse them with the glory of the church of the living God. Don't expect that somehow they will stay on the straight and narrow. They will be taught another wisdom. They will be in the context of a completely different context. And so they need to have something deep in their hearts. They need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They need to be excited about what is in your heart and in their heart. They need to be among other young people who are excited about Jesus, who are thrilled to know him. Without that excitement, without that motivation, the pressures of the wisdom of another culture will be terribly great. And so sadly we hear, or oh, when they became teenagers, they drifted off. We need to prayerfully, and in such an exciting way, present Jesus and his kingdom to them.